Yo guys, in today's video I want to show you the crazy games with which I got number one in the world. If you guys didn't know it, Chris the God is just a bugged account, so really got number one in the world and in this video I'm showing you how. Alright guys, jumping into the first game, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you didn't and also to subscribe to the channel. Yes, it's just an insanely support and now the first game we are playing against Yahoo. He is just playing with the Valkyr and I also know why he's playing with the Valkyr because he is not having the Mighty Miner Max unfortunately and I just can't give you the advice if you have the Mighty Miner Max just go with it because it's just incredible as you can see in this matchup but if not go with the Valkyr, go with the Guards or maybe with the Barbarians but this is the perfect example so why the Mighty Miner is insanely good but also it, it's a champion so I know some people of you can't play it because you are not having it maxed also maybe because you are just not level 14 yet okay now I'm doing the tombstone I'm also doing lava hunt first play because it's just not smart not going in for lava hunt if you are having a tombstone on the field so I'm just doing the right thing instantly I'm getting in with the balloon onto onto the lava hound or oh, yes I just pushed the balloon a little bit onto the right if you didn't saw it with my own lava hound so yes luckily the balloon didn't walked onto his tombstone now it was just a bad play to be honest I knew his tombstone is out I knew his rake here is out so his lava hound was for sure over commit so just spamming in with the ability just fireballing instantly the drake so I'm getting or I'm making as much as possible damage he's just having a mega minion but I just knew I don't have to defend my push because just zapping the king tower was actually already the free win and yes I think it's also just this fast win because of the Mighty Miner. Alright guys, jumping into the next game against Royal Giant and against the Royal Giant. The Mighty Miner is just insanely good as well because yes, he is just killing down the Royal Giant. Now I'm getting in with a Tombstone, same lane against his Electro Spirit. So yes, I'm actually not taking the kind of damage. Now I'm just getting in again with the Lava Hound and you maybe see my strategy in case the Tombstone is on the field. Always go just fastly in with the Lava Hound because he can't punish you instantly opposite lane. This is just a no-brainer. Now I'm just getting in with the Balloon in because I knew he's playing with the Electro Wizard. And yes, I thought, hey, should I defend the Fisherman? But I just knew I don't have to defend. Now I'm getting in with the Mega Minion, not with the Fire Spirit, because yes, he was having the Fireball, so Mega Minion is less value for him. So I'm just actually bringing my Skeleton Drakes back and <laughs> it's just insanely fast recons. You won't believe me that it was a top 10 gameplay, but it was a top 10 gameplay. I can show you actually the battle log if mighty miner connected onto the king tower again but you saw that he just gave up that's how we won against banzito by just one push because we did the tombstone on the field did the lava hound and yes it's incredible and that's how we actually got two fastly free crowns in a row in the top 10 jumping into the next game again against royal giant and yes the previous game is not a normal top 10 game for sure it's not normal that we are free calling him so fastly but now we are playing against the royal giant with the mother witch and i think with the zappies i just forgot it but the matchup is good again also he's playing with the giant skeleton so we shouldn't forget that now i was zapping the mother witch because i was hoping that the mother witch might get down unfortunately he uh, she didn't but it's still okay i have a small elixir problem but it's all good getting in with the mighty miner onto the dark onto, onto, onto the dark prince also it's important playing the mighty miner near your tower so the mother which is actually walking into your lane so your tower can help you so now i'm getting in with a tombstone opposite lane it's important playing the tombstone opposite lane so the fisherman can actually walk as fast as possible onto your lane and hopefully also the fisherman is just dying instantly or as fast as possible now i was hoping that my tombstone is surviving but unfortunately a big unfortunate unfortunately actually yes 
my the fisher was taking one hit onto my tombstone so my tombstone was just not surviving and now i had to play the deep mega min i had to defend his big giant skeleton royal giant push otherwise my king tower would have gotten down but it's okay i'm taking that i'm taking the tower trade T tower trade was probably the best thing which could happen for me but then i saw the opportunity getting in with the mighty miner and i said mighty miner is big big value i did the 4 to 4 trade onto the mother witch with my mighty miner and he still had to play the dark prince so actually it was a 4 to 8 trade just by my mega minion and now you can see my big alexia advantage probably because of my mighty miner so now i was able to go in with my um, tombstone i was worried about that he's playing probably with the earthquake because it also could have been a earthquake variation so in case he's playing with the earthquake never do a preemptive tombstone because it would been always just a free to free trade for him so never do a preemptive tombstone against earthquake but luckily he didn't have the fireball so i was just spamming in and what an insanely good start. Now I did the next tombstone again, the tombstone onto the right. Also, so the Mother Witch in the future are not getting too much value, but I was just so unlucky that the Mother Witch didn't want to die again. I always did the zap onto the Mother Witch, but Mother Witch never wanted to die. So yes, I had to cycle as fast as possible back to my next zap. So I was just, I was just playing the next tombstone and then, and finally zapping the Mother Witch. So the Mother Witch also just went down then playing a fireball onto the mother witch onto the next mother witch which came onto the field and yes the situation is perfectly i just got around about 800 damage onto my tower he just nearly lost his tower already so getting in with the next mighty miner yes i knew he could go in with for example with zappies so i had to use actually the ability otherwise Yes, the Mighty Miner is just stupid against Zappy, so just send your Mighty Miner opposite lane. Mighty Miner is taking a small counter push. All good, guys. Now I was getting in with the Zap against the Dark Prince. I was just boosting the Royal Giant far away, so I'm not getting too much damage, and I still have the big, big damage lead. My Lava Hound was shipping. I knew, come on, just giving him a good game. I was playing the Bloon into the pocket, and I thought I won. But his fireball was incredible good. So somehow I really don't know. Somehow he pulled the balloon onto his king tower. So the game was not over yet. But to be honest, it was kinda over. Now getting in with the mega minion, getting in with the next mighty miner, which is just pulling off the royal giant, and then getting in with the drakes into the pocket. And yes, he actually has to defend these kind of drakes into the pocket. So we won against Royal Giant. Okay, guys, I have to agree. Royal Giant was kind of easy matchup. Also playing against Lava Loon Mirror with the rake here is kind of easy matchup. But now we are getting into a pretty, pretty hard counter. In my opinion, it's the Alpha deck, but just with the Ghost, not with the Bandit. It's a in my opinion, completely hard counter. There's no way normally for me personally winning this. He has a fast cycle. He has the fire spirit, skeletons, bomber, log, and just the big boy. He has the inferno tower and also the rocket. So I just was thinking about, wow, how should I defend this? But I also knew he's just having an inferno tower. And also he's just having the rocket against me in the normal time. And also in the normal time, there's no way for him personally cycling back to the next troops for example for the to the next inferno tower so i was just getting in or i was just trying to bait out the inferno tower and the rocket with a normal lava skelly drake push and then always just getting in with the balloon onto him personally so this was actually a good good answer from my side so we went into a small elixir lead but especially also just a lot of damage onto him so now he did the royal ghost i knew okay i have to defend somehow the royal ghost because yes otherwise i can't spend the elixir pretty pretty wisely and just spamming more and more elixir behind the lava hound is also not the way to go so i was sending my mighty miner opposite lane killing the bomber also making some pressure onto his his inferno tower and now we are in the same situation as before inferno tower and the rocket is out of the cycle and this is the only opportunity how to win against this 
deck and now I did a pretty pretty smart move. I pull, I played the balloon like this so he couldn't actually defend his or my balloon pretty wisely. So yes, he didn't thought that he's getting so much damage. I knew he could cycle back to the inferno tower but somehow he didn't. So I was able to take two hits by my balloon by just knowing that his inferno tower and his rocket is out and yes we just managed to do that by playing a lava scaly drake push before. So situation is pretty pretty good and I knew just Carl come on you have to focus somehow and if you are just playing somehow kinda smart you are going to win that so I was just defending him also just getting in with a lava loon push not by not to take his second tower down I was just doing this one to keep the pressure real so he can't spend too much into the offense now getting in with the mega minion sending off the mighty miner onto the right lane to make some pressure hopefully he was logging this one but still kind of good for us because by my tombstone by my drags I managed to finish off and yes, it was just because I got him in this cycle that I was able to bait out the Inferno Tower and the Rocket and then just by naked balloons onto the bridge. And now we are coming into the final game and a big shout out goes again to Ungelag. He was in my stream while I was playing and it was no win trade for sure, it was no win trade. But I just asked him and he was number one in the world when I asked him to do that. I just asked him if he wanna play a fair match otherwise the search time is just so so incredibly bad for me so yeah i'm searching sometimes one about 50 minutes for just one game so incredible bad but now he just did giant skeleton skelly king onto the first play so i had to answer somehow his it was a smart push by him especially because he knew if i'm going to play with mega mini if i'm going to play with drakes most of my troops are actually yeah actually dying by his giant skeleton now i was playing the fireball onto him also i was trying to zap all of this troop unfortunately i just failed it and now i knew okay he is going to nado me so i was predicting his nado by my own ability also taking his lane tower down and now i just knew okay he might have his nado or his mirror nado in the hand because he was having a hunter also the nado and the mirror against my side myself so actually it's a fair trade it's a fair trade by getting in with the balloon onto the bridge he has to play just four elixir against five elixir and i'm taking this big amount of damage and it's a key play it's an important play just not going on to a one one situation always try to keep the game in a uh, zero zero situation this was was this was actually what ungelacht was teaching me and yes i just keep or yes i just was doing what he said and i was trying to keep the game in a zero zero situation and then the game is just kind of easy and i would say i have a big big counter against him so now he was doing the giant skelly I was just playing instantly the zap onto his uh, Skami, also just de dealing the Mighty Miner. Now he did a Nado. If it would have worked out, it would have been insanely good. But luckily for my side, it didn't work out. So I was just getting in with the next tombstone in case he's trying to do a giant Skelly onto my side. And then I was playing the Fireball also onto his Skelly King. It's not my number one priority to take down the tower by my damage. And then getting in with the mega minion against his hunter i was hoping that the hunter is dying and in this, in the, exactly this situation when the hunter was dying getting in with the next balloon onto the bridge is the key to go because i just needed this kind of death damage onto him also playing the zap onto him and yes now we are in an insanely good situation and by the way guys fireball zap is dealing 351 damage so it's not enough yet just for your information guys so getting in with mega minion getting in with the uh, skelly drakes and just zapping the next gami is kind of no-brainer also and i just can't stop the video or the replay for one second it's important not letting the skelly king connect onto your tower always go in with high tombstone against the skelly king so you can see actually even when he is using the ability Skelly King is most of the times not taking or nearly connecting onto your tower. So I was just getting luckily one hit by the Lava Hound. 
And then I just knew I have to zap his tower to take number one in the world. And yes, that's actually it how we managed. It's, it's, uh, it's early season for sure. But that's how we managed to get number one in the world. Uh, 36 trophies ahead of number one, which is incredible good. As I said at the beginning, he is just a bugged account. And yes, that's actually it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see more kind of this content, write me down in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you next video. Bye, guys.